Hey everyone. In the last video, I went over a redistribution case between EIGRP and OSPF and kind of just showed how to configure the redistribution. In this video, I'm going to show a problem we can run into, um, specifically with a loop that could happen when doing redistribution. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over the topology and I'm just going to do a show run section router on each device. So we can just take a look at what currently is, is happening. So the first thing that we'll see is R1 has a redistribute connected command. And specifically, it just has uh, one loop back. So we'll just call it loop. And it's doing redistribution into EIGRP. So from here, um, R2 and R3 are just in EIGRP. And R4, we have um, EIGRP, which is doing redistribution from OSPF. So we could take a look at R4. And the traffic is coming this way from OSPF into EIGRP. Taking a look at R5, we have exactly the opposite. So we have routes coming from EIGRP going into OSPF. And R6 is basically just a router in OSPF. So let's uh, take a look at the... I'll just make the quick divide here. Uh, you don't need to worry about this link at all, actually. This link is not running any routing protocols. Um, but we could see here's the OSPF. Here's our EIGRP domain. Okay. So first we could just make sure that, you know, redistribution is working properly. So let's take a look at R6 and show IP route. And we can see we have a bunch of OE2 routes. So we're learning about R3, R2, R1, uh, and a couple subnets externally. And let's take a look at R2 and we'll do a show IP route. We could see we have a couple external EIGRP routes. Um, 10046 is over here, 1056 is over here. We should be learning R6. And then we should also be learning our one external here. All right, so let's try to verify end-to-end -end reachability. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to R6 and see if we can ping the loopback of R1. So ping 1.1.1.1, and I'll source it from my loopback. All right, so already we can see we have reachability issues. Let's do a trace. All right. We're getting some timeouts. But we can see already the traffic went from 5 to 2 to 4, then timed out, and then 5 to 2 to 4, and then timing out, and we have a loop. So let's clean up this screen a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and, and quickly redraw the two domains and then we'll take a look at, you know, we'll follow the traffic. So we have here, we have here, OSPF, EIGRP, and then we have the loop back here. All right, so let's follow this traffic. So from R6, the first thing it's doing is going from 5 to 2 to 4, then 5 to 4, 5 to 4. All right, so we're coming up to 5, which, uh, why is that small? Hold on. Sorry about that. So we're sending to 5, which should be the correct decision. Because remember, 5 is taking the routes from EIGRP, putting them into OSPF. So it makes sense. R6 would choose 5. 5 is learning that route from 2, so it sends the traffic over to 2. Also makes sense. R1's over here. Then R2 
is taking the traffic and sending it to R4, which is not the correct decision. And then R4 is sending it to R6, which we're getting the um, unreachables here because basically R6 can't send a ICMP unreachable to itself. But then from there, it sends the traffic back to 5, to 2, to 4, to 6, to 5, to blah, blah, blah. And here's our data loop. So why is this happening? Well, we know that R2 is the one making the incorrect decision. So let's just get rid of that. So let's head over to R2 and try to figure out why. So let's do a show IP route for all ones. And we can see here that we're learning it from four, which is okay, wrong. <laughs> But why is it wrong? Show IP, EI, GRP, topology. Let's do all links. And here's our route from one. So we can see we're learning it from two spots. We're learning it via four and two. All right. The route coming in from four has a metric of like 72 million. And then this route has 662 million from R1. So this route here has a very high metric. And this one here has a lower metric. So that's the problem. R2 is going to prefer the route from R4. Now, how did this even get here in the first place? Well... Let's again follow the route. So R1 redistributes it to R2. R2 then does a couple things with it. Sends it out this link, which will go both to R4 and to R3. It will also send it out this link to R5. R5 takes the route, puts it into OSPF, gets down to R6, and R6 floods it back over to R4. Now, R4 is learning that link in two different places. So let's head over to R4 and, um, sorry, I'm just gonna erase some of this stuff. Okay, R4. Let's do a show IP route for our loop back. All right, we can see we're learning it from OSPF, which makes sense when we follow the data traff. But is it also learning it from EIGRP? EIGRP topology. Uh, let's go ahead and do all links here. It is. But it's learning it via redistributed. All right. So what's going on here? When R4 is learning the link from OSPF, and here what we could do is take a look and we already have it on the screen here and we could see known via OSPF with the distance of 110 well we know EIGRP is an administrative distance of 90 so why is it not preferring it and that's because the route here is actually an external route here so when this route hits R4, it's learning it externally from EIGRP with an AD of 170. It's learning it here with an AD of 110. So that's why R4 is going to prefer this route. And since it's in the OSPF table, or the OSPF database, I should say, it takes that route and it sends it back into EIGRP. Um... So that's the problem on R4. It doesn't, you know, it still doesn't explain why it has a lower metric on R2, but that's because if we look at, uh, let's do show run. We can see the metric here is 10,000, 10, 10 255, 1, 1500. We can see on R1, uh, which I already have on the screen actually, is 1,000. So this route is worse. 
Okay. So now we can see we have two problems. One is R4 is advertising the route with a much better uh, metric than the route coming in from R1. And the other thing too is why is R4 even redistributing this route back into EIGRP? All these routes, in, all these routers inside the EIGRP network would never need to go to R4 to get to R1. So there's a couple of different ways we could solve this. Um, one of the ways, which is perfectly valid, would be on R1 to set the metric to low or on R4 set the metric to high and therefore R2 never makes the incorrect routing decision. R2 will always take when the packet comes in, it'll always send it down this link to one. Okay, perfectly valid. Uh, maybe doesn't scale well. Uh, let's say we have, you know, maybe our ERGRP network is 30 routers or 20 routers. Let's say we have, you know, we're in a yeah, uh, CCIE lab and the, the topology is pretty large. Now you're going to have to keep track of the metric on every single point of redistribution. Probably not, you know, going to be the, the simplest way to do it or the most elegant, I should say. Uh, the other option is to go to R4 and maybe set a prefix list for all ones and then filter it out so that the router never redistributes it back into EIGRP. Perfectly valid solution, but it doesn't really scale well because then what happens if maybe R3 starts doing redistribution and R2 starts redistribution? Okay, well now we're going to have to do, a, you know, we're going to have to match two, we're going to have to match three, and so on and so forth. All right. Again, maybe not what we want. So what's a what's an elegant solution that'll scale well and match any prefix? This is going to be route tagging. So the way route tagging is going to work is you have to do it on a point of redistribution. So we're going to have to do it on R5. So R5 will need to set the tag here so that when R4 learns the route in, it can block it from redistribution back into EIGRP. And this is a pretty simple solution. So uh, I don't need to do a show command. I need to do, go into configuration mode. Route map, we'll call it set tag. Permit 10. And all we're going to do is just set tag. And we'll just say tag 100 because we're doing redistribution from EIGRP 100. Now all we need to do is go into OSPF and for our redistribution command, uh, which we're doing EIGRP 100, we do route map, set tag. All right. Now all the routes in the OSPF network that are external, so type 5 LSAs, will have this tag. So let's head over to R6 to verify that. So we'll do show IP route um, 1.1.1.1. And we could see perfect route tag 100. Another spot we could check is the show IP OSBF database. And in the database under our type 5 um, LSAs, we could see we now have a tag column and it's matching the tag that we're setting on those routes. Now this means if we go over to R4, we could see the same thing. So R4 knows the route with a tag of 100. So now we need to, R4, we need to match those tags. So we're going to do a route map match tag and we're going to deny anything that matches the tag of 100. We also need to do uh, match tag permit 20. And that's because we still want to do redistribution on the rest of the routes in OSPF. We just don't want to redistribute routes with a tag of 100. So let's go into router EIGRP. Let's go into address family uh, IPv4 unicast autonomous system 100. We have to go into the topology base. And what we're going to do here is redistribution for OSPF1 route map 
and we called it match tag. Okay. Now, let's head over to R2. Show IP route. And now you can see that we're learning it from R1. And if we do show IP EIGR topology all links, we don't know the route uh, for 1.1.1.1 from any other spot. We're only learning it from R1, which makes sense because when the route comes in, R5 isn't going to send it to us. R3 and R4 shouldn't be sending it to us due to split horizon. So, and now that we are matching the tag, it's no longer being sent to EIGRP. So let's head over to R6 and let's ping to make sure that our fix actually worked. And now we have pings and we could do a trace. And now the traffic goes over the exact uh, same path we wanted it to go over. So remember redistribution is happening here redistribution is happening here sorry i kind of drew the arrow the wrong way and the traffic flow uh so let's take here is coming from six up to five five to two two to one and we could also to make sure it's working in both directions it's let's ping six dot six uh, let's actually do it, source it from our loop back. And it's working there. So we could do the same trace, source it from our loop back. And now we can see the traffic is just flowing in the opposite direction. It's going to two, coming down to four, because four is redistribu doing redistribution this way, and then over to six. So I hope the video was clear. Um, this is a great way to solve any um, loops caused by redistribution. Uh, well, data plane loops caused by redistribution. And this would be tagging the external routes. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And we'll see you on the next one.